Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Here is the last March 2024 Speed Champion set to review, the 76921 Audi S1 e-tron Quattro. This amazing prototype was co-developed by Audi and the late Cam Block for his Electricana series. I will talk about the lack of his representation in the LEGO set later. I also have some shots of the real car that I took a year ago, but let's focus on the build first. On the front of the box we see the car in a cool snowy setting. I think this is inspired by a video Audi released last year of Matthias Ekstrom driving the car, I link it below. There's another angle on the back, a top view and a small photo of the real car. Let's open the box. The set has 274 pieces, it will be available from the 1st of March and the price is 27 euros or dollars like the other single packs. All other local prices and pre-order options can be found under the link in the description or in the pinned comment. The box contains two large paper bags, it's good to see some in the new sets, a sticker sheet, a vehicle base and a manual. The sticker sheet has 31 items, which isn't quite as many as half of the BMW stickers in the double pack, still close, but when you look at the car you can't really expect anything else. Here's the parts list if you are interested, now let's start building. The minifigure has a printed torso and leg as well, but the design is pretty basic and could have been a bit more colorful considering the car. The build begins traditionally with the rear axle, then there are a few unusual elements here and there. More sharp corners added sideways, it looks more like a Star Wars build. After the wheel arches we add some unusually large standard bricks, then the new wedge tiles also appear. Here is our first stickered element, and a rather unusual way of building things horizontally. As you can see, our red 1x1 plate is printed on the edge. We only get printed versions in the set which is better from a logistical point of view and also helps you because you won't accidentally use the printed tile in the wrong phase. Oh, I added the tiny sticker upside down, it's better now. Funny connections keep popping up, first this one that attaches with the clips, then the minifigure neck brackets that are attached there with their hollow studs. The new big bracket piece also appears here. This will be the rear end of the car with printed and stickered wedges on the same assembly. We have not one but two different 1x6 plates with printed edges, there's a tiny Audi logo in the center. The printed edge of the 1x1 plates is used here, and the whole section slides in place, attached with clips, it's a pretty snug fit. Do you remember those minifigure neck brackets? Those holes are practically stud holes, which means this snowboard part, new in dark bluish grey, so it can be attached to them, a pretty nifty solution. Here's the massive rear wing and we can again admire LEGO's three-dimensional system as the vertically mounted pieces fit perfectly over the studs, there's just enough room for them. Here's a small rear window and my not so favorite moment when I had to put three stickers on a single part. This is our build at the end of bag one, I have to tell you that rear end is heavy. We are adding things for the interior, here's the massive handbrake lever, then the steering wheel and apparently our Star Wars parts are the seats. Here is the dashboard with a screen in the middle. Do you remember that video I mentioned earlier? I think this is exactly the frame that the designer of the sticker used as a reference for the screen because all the data is identical. When building the side skirts this time we have studs pointing down. Interestingly the new large bracket piece is not used for the doors in this build. After adding the front axle comes the front of the car and this is a pretty tight fit under the triangular pieces. More printed parts, here's stickers and prints, and here's another one with a printed edge made in a clever way. Half of the part is covered, but the print is symmetrical so it works on both sides. It's time to attach it to the main assembly, we need large bricks to hold it in place. We have this whole area covered, then comes the cool printed hood piece and another set of slopes and the headlights, all printed. I covered the hood with tiles and here's another example of a super tight fit in the LEGO world with the rear view mirrors. Here's the part for the windshield, this time completely printed with no extra stickers. The windshield wiper is not common on the Speed Champions cars, I think this is the first time we've had it. And finally the wheels, the dual molded version from last year but with a new red rim and very cool printed 2x2 tiles for the wheel covers. Let's put them on and the build is finished. So here is our Audi and I have to say it looks fantastic, yes, tons of stickers but we also had a surprising amount of printed elements, this car is really fully decorated. I know some people won't like the amount of stickers used, but if I count it correctly, there are already 24 printed elements in the set, 
which is very unusual for something of this size. Luckily, the colors of the stickers are well done this time, they match the prints, I find this balance acceptable. The proportions may look odd, but the real car actually looks like this. Very short wheelbase, massive overhang at the front, huge wing, it's pretty authentic. I like all the tiny details, the snowboard part that replicates the curves back here, the funky tail lights stuck in the middle of the animation, same goes for the headlights, the whole car is replicated very accurately. The seats really look like that, the driver sits back here. If we want to be picky, the steering wheel should actually be somewhere here, around the middle of the door. The car was inspired by the legendary Audi Sport Quattro S1, and I was lucky enough to see both together in person in Budapest last year. Sorry for the vertical video, I was totally overwhelmed and the last thing I focused on was the footage. And best of all, we can actually recreate this scene in LEGO form, because we have the 76897 Audi Sport Quattro S1 here. According to the license plate, this is Walter Rohl's San Remo Rally winning car from 1985, and based on the official communication, the Hunitron was inspired by the Pikes Peak winning model from 1987, but technically it's the same car. They look fantastic together, and I think they are pretty proportional too. I haven't found exact measurements for the Hunitron, but the wheelbase is 2.4 meters, 20 centimeters more than the old model, which translates to a one stud difference here in LEGO form. Now, let's talk about the branding and why we didn't get a Camblock minifigure. Yes, I also think it could have been an amazing tribute to him, just like we got the Paul Walker minifigure with the Nissan Skyline. But Paul Walker passed away in 2013, the LEGO set was released almost 10 years later. I'm almost certain that the discussion about this car between LEGO and Audi started before Ken's tragic accident and no one was prepared to deal with the situation. I did a little research and didn't find any diecast models or toys that you could buy with the Hunitron livery. There are some with this stock Audi look, so I think there is more to this story than a simple decision by LEGO. There are several parties involved, Audi, Camblock's family and of course all the sponsors and companies represented on the Hunitron. Maybe one day we will be able to see a proper tribute model in LEGO form, a bigger icon scar would be awesome. All in all, I think this car looks great, especially together with the other Audi set. It may not be the most interesting build from the March 2024 releases, that title without a question goes to the Ford Mustang Dark Horse, but thanks to the looks and the model selection, it's a close second for me. Here are all the cars together, you wanted me to show them. Please let me know what you think of all these sets, which one is your favorite and why? Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications because there will be more exciting LEGO videos coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.